Welcome to Movie Caps. Today, I will show you a war film from 2012, titled, Into the White. Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. During World War II in 1940, a German aircraft is followed and shot by a British jet, in Grotli, Norway. Three of the four officers, including Lieutenant Horst Skippis, Wolfgang Strunk, and Joseph survive the crash, with Joseph's arm mildly wounded. They decide to walk to the coast to rejoin their forces, but cannot make it far due to the snowstorm. After spending the night in a snow cave, and resuming their journey the next morning, they come across a remote wood cabin, and decide to stay inside until the storm is over. While settling in, they hear someone's voice, and find two British soldiers walking to the cabin. They tell Skippis that their plane was shot down nearby, and they are in search of shelter. After a moment of hesitation, Skippis invites them in, where the guy introduces himself as Captain Davenport, and his air gunner Robert Smith. Being from rival forces, they cannot agree on anything, and start arguing with each other over deciding their beds, but the dispute settles down, after Skippis pulls up his gun, and takes them as prisoners of war. He takes a lighter from Davenport, to which he protests saying it's a gift from his father, but Skippis promises to return it upon their departure. After explaining some rules to Davenport and Smith, he draws a line in the middle of the hut, roughly dividing the area in two, and considering them German and British territories. Although he forces them to follow his orders, he assures them to take care of them, and share whatever limited facilities they have. Upon Skippis' orders, Strunk and Smith go out in search of more firewood, while he treats Joseph's injured arm. Davenport tries to help him, but he sends him back to his corner of the room, while explaining that he is not allowed to cross the line without his permission. After cooking the oatmeal they found in the cabin, Skippis equally divides it among all of them, and passes Davenport and Smith's share to them. As Davenport refuses to eat on the floor, and demands to sit with them at the table, he honors his request by dragging the table over the line. They start eating together peacefully, but not for long, as Smith and Joseph get into an argument over the food. After having dinner, Skippis thinks about the situation, and suggests they should stop fighting, and cooperate with each other, as it's the only way to survive in the wilderness. Upon his suggestion, they keep politics aside for a moment, and start discussion over random topics. Smith tells them about having an affair with the bartender at the base, and shows her note to them, in which she wished him a safe return. He then asks about Strunk, to which Skippis discloses he has a wife and three kids waiting for him back home. He is also told that Strunk is successfully running a family business, with more than 2,000 workers working under him, but decided to volunteer in the military, as the country needed him. The discussion proves to be an icebreaker, as each one of them shares different incidents of their lives, and they get to know each other. After helping them do the dishes, Davenport advises Skippis to use the alcohol in his compass to stop any infection in Joseph's wound, and even helps them in reading the maps. The next morning, Skippis wakes all of them while telling them they must resume their journey to the coast, as they only have a limited supply of food and firewood. Davenport suggests going their separate ways, but Skippis rejects it, saying it's against the rules. It leads to another argument, about who among the Germans and Britishers is best at following rules, but they are once again forced to settle it down, knowing there is no way to survive without each other's help. Soon they begin their journey, but are quickly forced to retreat to the cabin, as they start losing sight of each other due to a severe snowstorm. After running out of food, they unwillingly begin cooking and eating the moss to stay alive. At the table, Skippis tries to divert their minds, and asks Smith if he was really a champion at the darts game, as he told them earlier. He decides to prove it to them, and showcases skills by hitting different buttons on Joseph's coat. The game also brings them closer, as they enjoy his prank on Joseph. While outside, Smith spots some reindeers, and tries to signal others so they can hunt them down but loses his chance, as they disappear before Davenport and Skippis come outside. After coming inside, he provokes Joseph, by telling him that he used the pages from his book as toilet paper. In return, Joseph aims the gun at Smith, while threatening to shoot him down, despite Skippis' order to stop. Seeing this, Davenport steps in, and urges him to follow his commander's orders and lower his gun. Finding them distracted by him, Smith picks up a gun from the floor and holds Joseph hostage, while forcing Skippis to drop his weapon. It changes the situation, and Davenport forces them to move to their side of the cottage, while taking over their positions. Later they discuss the impacts of war with each other, where Smith asks Skippis' opinion, about Germany invading several countries. He replies that although it makes him sad, he has to obey orders from his superiors. As Smith accuses his country of taking over others' land, Skippis thinks it's no different than the Britishers, because they did the same to India and their other colonies. 
He also reveals, the British army wants to get hold of the Norwegian resources, so they can use the raw materials in their industries, and Davenport confesses it's true. The situation in the cottage gets serious as they run out of firewood, and start using different wooden items for burning. Meanwhile, Smith learns about Strunk's passion for drawing after finding his diary, but quietly returns it to him. Upon Davenport's orders, Strunk and Smith go out in search of the reindeers he spotted earlier, while he orders Skippis to cut down the main beam of the cottage, to use as firewood. Despite disagreeing with him, Skippis follows the orders, but the idea proves to be terrible, as the roof starts to cave in, and they rush to hold it back by stepping over the tables. The situation gives Skippis a chance to get the gun from Davenport, but it does not make much of a difference, as he is forced to return to the table, to prevent the roof from shattering over their heads. As they stand there, Skippis has a moment of weakness, and shares with him that he thinks of himself as a failure, as he was involved in a plane crash earlier as well, that cost three people's lives, and now he is worried about Joseph, as his wound is getting worse. Outside, Smith spots and shoots a rabbit, and they bring it back while peacefully talking to each other. After coming back, Strunk quickly supports the roof by placing a temporary pillar. Smith finds that the tables have turned now, as Davenport is the prisoner, while Skippis is holding the gun. Smith and Skippis point guns at each other, but both parties decide they should cease fire until they get out of this mess. After keeping their guns in a box outside the cabin, they turn to the rabbit, and prepare it for cooking to have a proper meal. By this time, they have become closer to each other, and help each other in different chores, while the boundary line is removed. Soon, they realize that Joseph's arm has become infected with gangrene, so Davenport suggests amputating his arm to save his life. After finding no other way, Skippis orders them to get wood from the walls and the floors, to boil water and disinfect the axe. While following the orders, Strunk accidentally finds a box full of dried meat and drinks, hidden under the floorboards. They get Joseph drunk, and ask Skippis to cut his arm, but he is not able to do it. Meanwhile, Joseph wakes up and gets worried seeing them gathered around him, but Smith knocks him down again, and Skippis unwillingly amputates his arm with the axe. As they cannot decide what to do with the arm, Skippis suggests wrapping it in something and burying it, while arranging a small ceremony in Joseph's presence. Smith, who is already on the edge of frustration, disagrees and throws it outside in the dark. As the group is finally friends with each other, they spend the night playing games, while Smith sings a song for them. Meanwhile, the Norwegian forces plan their next move, and start moving towards their next target. In the cottage, Skippis and Strunk present their cultural dances. On Davenport's turn to do something, he uncovers four hidden cigarettes, and offers them to the group, while telling them that he was saving them until they reached the coast, but he thinks it's the best time to use them. Later that night, Smith and Strunk are involved in another deep conversation, Smith asks about his desired profession if given a choice. Strunk thinks he should focus on his responsibilities towards his country, but Smith disagrees, advising him to do what makes him happy instead. Finally, as the weather improves, the rescue team spot the remains of their jets, and start searching for survivors. Joseph wakes up, and gets shocked to see his arm, but Skippis comforts him while explaining the situation, and assures him they did it to save his life. They discuss their plans to move forward, Skippis thinks they should get separated, but Smith disagrees. He suggests that he will go to the hilltop to look for the best route, and will return to the group to lead them, and Strunk agrees to go with him. They prepare the skis they found in the cottage, and begin their journey, while Davenport and Skippis stay with Joseph. They finally reach the top, where Strunk tells him that he always wanted to be a painter, but could not go into that career, thinking it might not pay well. Seeing his passion, Smith suggests he should go to Paris and paint tourists, but he knows it's not possible until the war is over. After some time, they start skiing down the hill, but Strunk gets shot by Norwegian soldiers, who arrest Smith as well. Smith then leads them back to the hut, where Skippis mourns the death of his soldier. After collecting Strunk's drawings from the cottage, the soldiers arrest the rest of the group, and intend to take them back to the military camp. Upon returning to the camp, Smith and Davenport are questioned by their superior, who thinks they should have killed the Germans instead of staying with them. He further tells them that this gesture can be considered treason, as he suspects they might have collaborated with the Germans. The discussion is interrupted by the arrival of Skippis, who returns Davenport's lighter as he promised, but Davenport cannot bring himself to look at him. After he leaves, Davenport snaps at his senior, telling him they did not betray their countries, and were just trying to survive. Later, Skippis and Joseph are taken away by a boat, while Smith and Davenport stand at the dock to see them leaving, and share a glance with them. It is revealed that Skippis and Joseph were taken to the prisoner camps in Canada. Smith and Davenport rejoin the combat, 
but were shot down in their very next flight, that costed Smith's life. In 1977, Skipis gets a call in his home in Munich. It is Davenport, who invites him to London, where the former enemies meet as friends. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications and leave a like to help the channel out.